Don't 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 say anything offensive back there. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Dominic Fiore. I am the sommelier at Bar Marco here in the Strip District in Pittsburgh. Um, I also am the front of house manager, sort of do anything, but my main job is um, the sommelier here, which, if you don't know, I, I sell wine for, for a living, essentially. <laughs> so yeah, I went to the Culinary Institute of America. I used to want to be a chef. Uh, I love food, I love cooking, but cooking professionally just wasn't for me. So it's kind of like a scary moment when you're still paying a lot of money to go to school for something that you sort of know you're not going to end up doing. But luckily enough, uh, they uh, a wines class, like Wines 101, is part of the curriculum there. Um, and I remember just at the end of day one, it was like fireworks going off in my brain. It was like something I could really wrap my head around. and. Um, I remember people talking about how hard it was, but it just wasn't hard for me. You know, if you're interested in something, information sticks, at least for me it does. Um, so, right place, right time, like I've been so many times in my career. Uh, I got a job working for Daniel Balut at Cafe Balut in New York City. Um, and then I eventually worked my way up to be the assistant unofficial sommelier at Cafe Balut. Um, and then afterwards, moved to Danielle, which was at the time three Michelin star restaurant, um, four star New York Times. When I was 23 years old, I was like, you sure you have the right guy? You know, 23 years old. Um, and uh, it was wild, it was a wild experience being exposed to all those wines. Um, for lack of a better term, sort of accidentally fell into Pittsburgh. Um, it was supposed to be a temporary thing. Uh, and then just sort of fell in love. I love Bar Marco, it's honestly the fa my favorite job I've ever had. I've been here for just over four years. So it's actually the longest tenured job I've ever had. Um, but yeah, so that story is not unique either from what I hear about people in Pittsburgh. It's just by accident and they end up staying. I think anybody who is in wine would be lying if they didn't say the alcohol content had something to do with it, at least at first. And it's just really interesting. I, I really like history and I think a lot of, you know, the way the shape of the wine landscape has a lot to do with you know history and geography, which has always interested me. Um, it was sort of you know food is great and a wine can be great, but you put them together, it's like magic. The sum is greater than the parts all the time. Um, it's easy subject matter to get excited about. I always say too. I mean, I think so at least. Uh, is there anything specifically that made my interest in wine? Again, that, I keep laughing, but the alcohol content definitely had something to do with it. Uh, it's, once you start learning, you realize how just deep the rabbit hole goes. You just keep endless, endless amount of information, and it's always changing. And it was always intriguing to me. Yes, um, my MO here and sort of my whole direction of my wine career and specialty is called natural wine. So what is natural wine? It's three big criteria that I always look for. Um, number one, um, all organic and biodynamic farming. So no chemicals, no herbicides, no pesticides. Uh, true biodynamics in the vineyards. So you know, to pick on magazine cover wineries that you see where you see nothing but grapevines for hundreds of miles. It's actually horrible for the topsoil. It's horrible for the environment. Um, there's no ecosystem in nature that exists where just one organism is all you find. So these vines brush shoulders with grass and trees and birds and other animals. Um, everything any happy, healthy vineyard site would. Um, and then number two, it's all wild yeast fermented. So there's no inoculation of any laboratory yeast. The yeast that's on the fruit, the yeast that's at the winery in the air ferments the juice. Uh, the way wine was made for forever until 1940s or 50s when commercial yeast really became widely used. Um, and then lastly, minimal if any manipulation when it's in the cellar. So nothing added or taken away, nothing stripped or you know acidified or sulfur or any other preservatives. Um, just sort of take what nature gives you and don't do too much to it. I, I always, you know, I'm surprised and I never would have thought I'd be just as excited, you know, with these really small, lower end price point wines that are made by people that care about the environment and really care about the wine that they make um, than I would be you know, in New York pulling cork on a $5,000 bottle. Uh, and it's absolutely true. 
Uh, it, it's a whole ethos of, you know, pretense free, just sort of, look what I made. I want you to drink it. You don't have to wait 20 years to drink it. Um, just excited people, just like me, and it was pretty easy to fall in that circle.